What's your favorite movie? You know, when I was a kid, I watched E.T. daily. Like, I wore the tape out. That's how much I watched it. Wasn't there a video game for that? <sighs> yes. Was it good? Greetings, greetings, fellow stargazers. So today, hello, tonight. It's my telescope. This evening. If you're up there changing right now, sorry. You're not a star, but neither am I. My oh, telescope's broken. 46 people disagree. I'm a star. 55 now. Oh, We're yeah. probably at 56. I'm going to say 56. Grandma. Also, Duke, thanks for subscribing, finally. So today, on the night blog, <laughs> we're going to talk about our least favorite movie tie-in video games. But yes. instead of normally we do, we share a top five. Yeah. Uh -huh. Instead, we're each going to bring in three. Okay. And we have to dis together decide. We don't know what each one's bringing in. Mm -hmm. We have to decide together what's the ranking of these on a scale of number one being the worst and number yeah. six being not the worst. Right. Now, we can all agree that, like, when you see a movie, uh, and let's, let's go back all the way to, like, Batman and Robin. When I first saw it, great. I When I was a kid, I was like, this is awesome. You know, there was... Keep going. <laughs> I, you know, you saw it the first time. I was like, oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze? Genius. I thought that was weird when I was a kid, but go on. Okay. Everything about it, like, I was a big fan of uh, when Robin comes out of the water and they play it back in reverse. I was like, sure, neat trick for uh, editing, I guess. And they play the same clip again later. Uh, I, obviously, I didn't think about that as a kid. I just thought it was a cool movie. Uh, lo and behold, it doesn't matter how good you think something is when you experience it the first mm -hmm. time. More likely than not, there's going to be someone who capitalizes on the ability of a movie to have you hyped about it to sell other things. One of those usually is a video game. Mm. And a cheaply made, quickly produced, I mean, thin on the layers of code that just ships out the door. All they do is put a layer over it that is your movie. It doesn't even have to do with the movie. It just says... Batman and Robin, and what it really is, is a space shooter set in Japan in 2057, and Batman's in the beginning, and you never see Robin, and Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, did the voice, but for a different character, and, you know, these, this, isn't, this isn't a real game, by the it's way, weird. it's just, but that's how, that's how it goes, that's how it you goes. know? So we're, we're gonna bring in, we have our, our we have three of our, our least favorite, and mm -hmm. we're gonna try and rank them here, so, Keebs, I'm gonna let you, oh, you go first here. Thanks, man. Okay, so actually I'm going to start with a, with a Batman game, okay. but it's Batman Forever. Did you put the real... Uh, it was that... on Super Nintendo. Okay. And my cousin had it, and we played it all the time. I think and, I remember playing that one. Yeah. Actually, yeah. And so when you... Like, this this also goes back to the like whole nostalgia thing. Like, I go back to when I played that, and I think I really enjoyed it. But I remember going back to it again, like, ten years later, being like, well, this is a turd. You know? And, and it was built on... And it, what it was is a side-scrolling adventure game beat -em -up, platformer. Wasn't it? Yeah, it was a beat-em-up. But it was built with the Mortal Kombat engine. And it was done with, like, the real-life actor stills that had, like, you know, this kind of move thing. That's interesting. And, like, he'd throw the stun grenades and guys would just go... <laughs> you know? It was terrible, terrible. The music was, oh, grinding. I mean, it was like... My, my wife can't stand it when you do the, the metal on teeth or metal on a bowl, you know? Mm. it's So her reacting to that is me now listening to the music. It's just Aye. like... Huh, huh. So, Batman Forever is definitely one of my least favorite movie tie-in games. Okay. For me, it, it's, it's The Phantom Menace. Okay. I'm a big Star Wars fan, um, and I, I, when I saw The Phantom Menace game, I'm like, all right, I get to play the mm -hmm. movie, which now in retrospect is not a fun game to play from not a fun movie. Um, was it fun back then? Do you remember having fun? Kind of. I couldn't play it at first because my computer wasn't good enough. Like, I hit enter and nothing would happen, and then after 30 seconds my character would jump, which made the platforming aspects very hard. Yeah. But when we finally did get a good enough computer, like, a year later, mm -hmm. I tried to play it, and it was still really bad. But for some reason, I wanted to finish it. I finished the game. I yeah. completed it because I cheated, and I got, like, infinite lives, hey. and infinite lives, <laughs> so I wanted to play it. And in retrospect, I keep thinking, like, why did I, why was I adamant about that? Mm -hmm. It's not that good. Right. It's just, I actually tried playing it again recently, and uh -huh. it's like, I... The angle is like it's just top down when you fight you just like mm, 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 so you're Anakin you're Obi-Wan actually <laughs> oh, mm, and it's just and I hate it's, the... it's just bad it's just, it's, it's just bad it's bad sometimes they're just bad okay my other one and this one <clears throat> is so much fun for me to talk about because I had this on Game Boy Color and it was Austin Powers 
Welcome to my underground lair. <laughs> I don't think so, there needs any more explanation. It really, not much. And I won't go too far into it because it is ridiculous. Um, and what I remember is, like, they did this pseudo-operating system approach. It was made by Rockstar. Rockstar. Really? The kings of video games. Like, and so it was, back then, it does this thing where it's, like, installing, and it's, like, uh... On a Game Boy Color? Oh, yeah, and it pretends like it's installing, like, Windows on the thing. And it does this, like, little DOS prompt or whatever. And you have to spend, like, a long time setting up your name and your pet and whether you want to be a clone or a man or a woman. And then once you're into it, you just choose a minigame. And you go and play Pac-Man as Dr. Evil, or you go and do a platformer as a really terrible-looking Austin Powers that yes. looks like like a monkey. <laughs> just, and it's bad, <laughs> it's bad platforming, and you die from trash cans that walk. And there's nothing good about this game. And that, mm. But randomly, you would like things would pop up at the bottom that said, Yeah, baby! So they were like really just cheaply cashing in on stupid things just from the movie. The, the thing in it was there. terrible. So that's absolutely one of the worst. Oh, you know what? I'm... I'm just hearing about that makes me cringe. It makes me sad a little bit yeah. because the Austin Powers movies were delicatessen. I mean, they were so funny and timeless that you pair that with a game. Maybe. Uh, well, yeah. I yeah. guess opinions. Yeah. Opinions are fun. Uh, they're still fun. Yeah. I still like them. <laughs> it's I like timeless. If I paired that with a game, I would think more of like a like a Telltale game it would be really funny in an Austin Powers. Those, those, those exist. Well, they if they had, ex yeah, in a way, like adventure are, games. But yeah. like to just put an Austin Powers skin over like an arcade game. Like, Why maybe not? pinball. I, I could see I, Austin Powers pinball. I, when researching this, trying to remember, jog my memory of games earlier, there is an Austin Powers pinball game for the PlayStation. See? They just should have skipped this. We should. We <laughs> right should, to pinball. Was, we, we should see if we can get that on. Um, mine is, is Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo. <gasps> not the Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo. I loved that game. Really? Yeah. Well, see, I liked the... The, the first person parts were so fun. Oh, I hated it. Because I, I really liked the Sega Genesis version. Okay. And so when I my cousins got it for the Super Nintendo, because I uh -huh. played the Sega Genesis version, and a friend was like, oh, this game's awesome. I turn it on, and me was like, what is this? It's like top down, uh -huh. doesn't tell you where to go. Then you get the first person, and like, I was terrible at games. I was like, I don't know what this is. You're wearing goggles uh -huh. for some reason, and you're in your field of view, and there's Dilophosaurus, like, blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. It was like Doom with dinosaurs. It was weird. Yeah. I didn't know what to do. And all you had was go. a stun gun. And then somebody T-Rex comes out, and you too. That scared the crap out of me as a kid. You'd get to this one point, the T-Rex would always chase you, and you weren't supposed to go there yet. It was almost like the designer's way of saying, nope, not yet. You know, you'd get there and the T-Rex would just chase you down. I, that, that's, I guess it's, it's a matter of opinions, but that's on the list for yeah. me. Hey, that's okay. If I played it now, I might feel different. Okay. But I do remember the elevator music. Uh, oh. I don't remember. I'm just, just doing stuff. It's something like that. I don't, if we pulled it up, it would be... I want. That's got to be my ringtone. Remind do me it. to do that. Do it. Okay. Now this next one... I kind of had to go in with my wife on this and decide on which one was worse okay. because I said Ghostbusters. Did you ever play the Ghostbusters game? Which one? The newest one that was on like Xbox 360. Yes, yes, my roommate. That was when basically I was in a fishing got it. game. Was, uh, yeah. All you could do is. <laughs> but they actually had Bill Murray in it. Yeah, oh well, no, it was, yeah, voice yeah. acting yeah. was legit. Um, but anyways, she, she reminded me of one that was much worse, oh, and yeah. that was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. It was a movie tie-in game, and all you did was chores as a wizard. So you'd have a daily task, you'd be like, oh, we need the gnomes out of the garden. You'd be like, okay. And after you finished them off, you'd say, I'd like to end the day, please. And you'd fall asleep, and the next day you'd have more chores. Did and you go into the Chamber of Secrets at all? I mean, later, yeah. I mean, the story did progress uh, the same way that, like, you would take out the trash and then go to your room. You know? <laughs> like <laughs> Riveting. Yeah, there was nothing. I mean, the game itself, like, on it was on GameCube. And so it was cutesy, la da da, you know, stuff like that. And I think at the time it would have been okay because there weren't a lot of options on GameCube of games. They were very sparse, spread out. So maybe at the time playing it, we were like, this is pretty fun. But going back was just detrimental to its life. We were like, this is just boring and stupid, and I want to play Harry Potter. <laughs> Spell. Wingardium. There we go. You remember them. Levishmosa. I, I did read the books twice. I like them. I Cappuccino. Yes. Is, is there one Give me your third. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the NES. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was awful. I thought it was going to be the arcade one I got. I'm like, what is this? And then you're in the, the, the underwater level, and there's electric stuff. I don't need to explain. You all know. You all know. You all know. <laughs> I like that game, too. I, like, I never got past that one. Cause, like, it's oh, I, I liked how hard it was. I, I, and not, that's not always an appeal to me. Yeah. But, you know, like, I, nowadays, the <clears throat> comparable stuff is like the Dark Souls series. That was the Dark Souls of its time. It was like, if you can beat the underwater level, you can next you can do Battletoads. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we have right. to decide our now worst just, three. Our, our worst three. Um, okay. You know, I'm willing to say that that Austin Powers one sounds like a number one. I'm going to say number one is Austin Powers that, for sure. I was hearing about that. I'm like, ooh, that that is number one. Yeah. But I'm going to say Phantom Menace for number two. That's what I was going to say. You describing that made it's me just, angry. It, 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 like, you do a flip, but you don't move forward in it. Yeah. You just move up and kind of forward. But when I, what about number three? I mean, you got your Batman Forever. Mm-hmm. Your Harry Potter, which is doing chores. But we also have Jurassic Park. And Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know... I mean, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is universally reviled. Yeah, but... But, but you... That's my new ringtone. I just hung up on his wife. Maybe that. I would say... Harry Potter? Because doing chores. I have to admit, I'd rather play Home Alone. Uh, not Home Alone. Do you have That's Home Alone on there? Is I, that I, I was thinking about honorable it. mention? Honorable mention, because it has nothing to do with Home Alone. You're, you're jumping over vacuums in a hotel. Um, I, you know, I was going to say, I'll let you have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's three. All right, let's do it. I'll accept that That's as three. It's, it's, I just, you, 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 turtles can breathe underwater, I think. <laughs> mutant turtles? They're mutant. They can do anything. Oh, okay. So let's start tonight in Paris Hilton's shoe closet. So once upon a time. In Paris Hilton's shoe closet. There was... Mr. Peanut Head, the village idiot, who so, lived in one of her Uggs. Her so this is actually Uggs. about Paris Hilton? It is. It's <laughs> Paris Hilton living in a giant Ugg in her shoe closet, but she's known as Mr. Peanut Head, the village idiot. We've had that one like three times. And unfortunately... We've had that one three times as well. Do it. We oh, had that once. Okay. <laughs> we're just skipping. We're, we're breaking the game now. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you see this man, I don't see how it could be fortunate. Randy Quaid is elected president of the shoe of, closet. Yeah, of the shoe closet. And and Mr. Peanut Head Hilton. Paris <laughs> Peanut Head Hilton. Paris Peanut Head Hilton. <laughs> Mr. Paris Peanut Head Hilton. <laughs> he identifies as a Paris Hilton. And, as, and as a peanut. Yeah. The village. And as a peanut. <laughs> he, he's just not like this. Because Randy Quaid is limiting her shoe intake. And unfortunately, a shoe because she eats shoes. That's what she does in the shoe closet. That's why she needs so many shoes. I, it makes sense. It makes sense. But unfortunately... Oh, maybe that's why she gets so mad when people steal them. A baby was found, and it was her baby. In the shoe. In the shoes. And so it stinks. It smells bad. And Randy Quaid This decides, baby stinks. I'm going to eat the baby <gasps> as the president. And Paris, and How are we Paris not sure it's just the shoes mostly. that stink? Cause, well, he's found it in the shoe. Oh, okay. So now... It obviously smells like baby. obviously smells like baby, or baby. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, though, and it's a solution to all our problems, mm -mm. from the stench of the shoes and from Randy Quaid's ineptness, everyone dies. Oh. Story time, my friend. Oh. The story cons. I love story time. Mm. I remember when I was a child of yore. Mm. My father... Me. Lie me in bed. Yes, son. And he would take a Batman book I didn't that had do that. the little, the, you push the buttons and no, it No, son, no. And he'd be tired, he wanted to go to bed, and he'd skip pages. He did go to bed. He'd skip pages, and I'd I didn't catch have him. a son. Hey, hey, hey. Stories are lame. Hey. Go to sleep. <laughs>